Baptist Church, we are glad you're here and appreciate you for coming out and being a part of our service today. You guys are a blessing to us. Uh, uh, we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord today. It looks like it is uh, spitting snow just a little bit out there, but I promise I'll get you out before it gets too deep. All right? At least snow-wise. And so, uh, but I appreciate you guys for being here today. We want to begin our service this morning uh, with a pretty awesome way, and that's with baptism. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to introduce this young lady to you. This is Emily Marie Brake, and she was saved back in October uh, in Children's Church. And uh, man, that's just one more reason to praise the Lord for Children's Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. And she's following through with Believer's Baptism. And uh, she's a little nervous and uh, shaking just a little bit right now. But, uh, she's not used to standing up in front of everybody like this, I guess. And I want to baptize this, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's worship our Savior through song. Let's welcome him here today as the choir would come up also. Get ready. Let's sing this together. Sing it out. Lift it up this morning. We welcome him here.
Let's all stand together. Amen. Where do we go? We go to the rock. When there's nobody else to turn to, when there's nobody else to talk to, our Savior is right there with us at all times. Amen. Amen. He's with us at all times. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much, Father, for this worship time that we have already had. Father, I pray as we continue to worship you through song and as our pastor brings his message that you've given him, uh, for this week, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit guides each thing, each word, each action today, Father, as we continue to worship you. Father, I thank you for those that are here today, Father, to hear your word. And I pray if that word falls on somebody here that doesn't know you today, Father, I pray that you speak to their hearts. Let them know that, that they need you, Father, because you will always be there with them through everything in their lives. Thank you, Father, for your Son. We thank you for him so much, Father, the sacrifice. We pray all these things in the matchless name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing this song together. Good. 
Amen. Exalt him this morning. He's being exalted higher and higher. He is an awesome God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Amen. Just a couple of more announcements, uh, one more maybe. Um, on March the 8th, um, uh, we're going to be meeting with uh, other folks from other churches down in, uh, at, at First Baptist Church. Um, a while back in uh, Clay County, Kentucky, the churches got together and really took back that county. Uh, Clay County was known for uh, uh, drugs and, and um, uh, violence and that kind of thing. And the churches got together and said, we've seen enough. Uh, we need to give this county back to God. And sure enough, uh, that's exactly what they did. They uh, came together and prayed and called for repentance. And um, uh, it, it's amazing uh, what God has done in that county. Just the other day, I was watching the news, and I saw where uh, in this county here, the um, sheriff's department said that they busted the um, uh, largest meth ring and meth lab that they have ever seen in this county. And that tells me right there that uh, we are not exempt from uh, such problems and issues, even in a place like Churchill. And so uh, what we want to do is, is get together with these uh, other uh, churches. And uh, they did this down in Rogersville uh, just not long ago. 1,200 people showed up for the rally. Uh, 1,200 people. Now, this is not a, a rally on March the 8th. This is the organizational meeting, prep meeting kind of thing. But everyone is invited to come and be a part of that. Uh, and then we'll talk about how to, uh, and where to do the rally and, and that sort of thing. We're going to try to get one of the schools to open up the gym uh, so that we can come in and, and really begin to pray uh, God's uh, fire down and bless it as well on this community. And I want you to, to be a part of it. I think it's important, guys. God's people need to get involved in this kind of stuff. It's our children that it affects. It's our children that it affects. And God's people really need to be a part of it. And I truly encourage you to get in on that. That's the eighth. Next Sunday, you are in for a special blessing. How many of you remember Cliff Donahoe from when he was here a while back, uh, preached revival? Great, about seven of us. Okay. Um, uh, then you'll, uh, you are in for a particular blessing. Um, uh, Brother Cliff Donahoe is, will be here to preach for us. He and his family are going to uh, Tallahassee, Florida, to start a church and um, uh, we'll be taking up an offering for him uh, next uh, Sunday so please be ready for that but uh, he's going to be preaching for us and his son Chad is going to be doing some singing for us and I think the family's going to do some singing but uh, they are tremendous Cliff is a great preacher and I'm looking forward to hearing him preach if I have to have a, a, a pastor I'd want it to be Cliff Donahoe I'm telling you um, uh, but he is a tremendous preacher, and his son is an unusual talent as far as singing. He's done some southern gospel stuff with poet voices and with uh, uh, um, fill-in for the Kingsman, or, or excuse me, uh, Gold City, and uh, folks like that. I mean, he is exceptional. So um, uh, you're going to thoroughly enjoy that, and I am too. I can't wait for him to be here. That's going to be next Sunday, okay? So make sure you are here for that. Uh, you'll receive a blessing, I'm, I guarantee it. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of 1 Corinthians. Your notes say 2 Corinthians, but someone misprinted uh, that. Tammy? Where's Tammy Johnson? Oh, she was at the early service. It was Tammy, the church secretary. I'm just kidding. Huh? Uh, does it? Mine says second. I got it out of the bulletin. Top sign says second. Top line says second Corinthians. Yes, first Corinthians is where you need to be. First Corinthians is where you need to be. Does yours say second? It says first. 
Well, good. If yours says first, it's because I corrected that one <laughs> before it was filled out. But if yours says second, just put a one there if you don't care. Tammy, Tammy will take care of it. That's right. Tammy didn't do it. It was me. Y'all know that song? Uh, who does that song, We Are the Body? Who, who sings that, John? Casting Crowns sings that song. The song says, if we are the body, talking about the body of Christ, why aren't our arms reaching? Why aren't our hands healing? Why, uh, uh, why aren't our words doing something? I mean, if, if we're the body of Christ, why are we not doing what the body of Christ was designed to do? Why are we not doing what the body of Christ is, is intended to do? To do what God wanted the body of Christ to do. You see, check this out. We have turned church, and I say we, I'm not just talking about First Free Baptist Church, I'm talking about the church in general, okay? We have turned church into something that God never intended church to be. Amen? Yeah, you may not agree, but you're going to get it eventually. You'll get it, trust me. We have turned church into something that, that God never intended it to be. We are supposed to continue the ministry that Jesus began. That's what we're commissioned to do. He said, go and teach. Not just the people around you, but the people outside of where you are. He said, go and baptize. Not just the people around you, but evangelize and minister to people all around. And sometimes that's not an easy thing to do because I'm telling you guys, when you get into true ministry, ministry is dirty. Ministry's dirty. Ministry is 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 something that you'll that you you'll get your hands dirty if you get into it very much. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's worth it. Y'all know I know nothing about gardening or farming. Did y'all see, uh, Missy and I were watching TV last night. And y'all know they have these dating sites. You know, Match.com, Christian Singles Only. They, this is a gospel truth. If y'all seen it, let me know. They had a commercial, what was it, FarmersOnly.com. A singles thing for farmers only. Are there that many farmers looking for mates? I mean, are there that many that you got to have a whole FarmersOnly.com kind of a thing? I don't know. I know nothing about farming. I know even less about FarmersOnly.com. But uh, 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 I know that if you're going to produce anything in a garden, you got to get your hands dirty. you got to get down there, and, 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 and uh, uh, if you're planting potatoes, you're going to get your hands dirty because you got to put the potatoes in the ground. If you're if, if you're if you're planting corn, you're going to get your hands dirty because you got to plant that seed. If you're in ministry, you need to get your hands dirty if you're going to plant the seed like you're supposed to. If we are the body and if we are to use what what God has given us and that's what we call spiritual gifts, if we are to use those things like we should, we need to understand we're going to have to get our hands dirty. So when I ask questions like this, uh, um, I, I don't just think about our church, although our church is a major part of it. I, I think also about the, the church in America today. And, and I come up with some possibilities as to why we do not function as the body of Christ like we should. And some of these things are not easy to look at. Some of these things are not easy to hear. As a matter of fact, some of them are hard uh, um, uh, and and. and especially as it relates to you and me because they may actually hit home but I, I thought why is it we don't do that and so I've written down a few things as to why I think we 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 don't perform as the body of Christ like we should as his church and I want you to listen to some of them I, I think that some say they don't have any gifts some say they don't have any gifts to use and that's why they don't do things. Uh, others uh, are not sure exactly what their gifts uh, are. They don't know what their gift is, and, and that, that could be a possibility. Others really don't know how or where to use their gift. That's, a, that's probably a very real possibility, that, that you, you, you know you have a gift, but you just don't know how to use it, or maybe you don't know where to use your gift. I think others are scared to use their gift. I think they're afraid to use their gift because of what they think others are going to think about them if they do it. 
I mean, there are people, listen, who have beautiful voices but won't sing in the choir because they're afraid people will go, well, who does she think she is singing in the choir? I mean, uh, who does he think he is uh, uh, singing a special? I think there are people that are afraid to actually do something for the Lord because they're afraid of what people will think of them. Others have been told that their gift isn't worth using. And that's never the case, guys. If, if the Holy Spirit gives you a gift, uh, trust me, it is worth using. Others are convinced, have convinced themselves that someone else uh, should use that gift and not them because they'll be better at it than they are. But let me say this. If God, if God has given you a gift, if he has given you a spiritual gift, you better know that he will... Uh, help you perform it to the greatest of his ability if you'll just be willing to use it so it's not oh, yeah there are people that are more talented than we are there are more people that are what but listen God when he gives you with a gift he gives you the ability to perform it and to do it others aren't aware of how uh, their gift can help the body others feel that their their time using their gift is past that, that there, there's no more, you know, they, they would use their gift, but they've wasted their life. And now, you know, it's about to the end and they just don't feel like they can use it. Let me just say, I know that your time has not ended because you're breathing. And then there are some that say that they, they're not ready to use their gift yet. But I believe you are. And still others, let me just say, are too lazy to use their gift. They're just too lazy to use their gift. No matter the reason or the excuse that people may use for not using their gifts for God, the result of them not using it is that the kingdom of God loses golden opportunities. The kingdom of God, listen, when you don't use your gift, the kingdom of God loses golden opportunities for the Holy Spirit and the Lord to work through you to touch and minister to someone else. And not only that, but you lose a blessing. You lose a blessing when you fail to use your gift that God's given you. And I want to say this to you. Each one of you, if you're a believer today, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, each one of you, each person has been given a gift. You were set free to serve. You were set free to utilize the gift that God has given you. You were set free not just for the sake of being set free from hell, but you were set free to serve by using the gift that was implanted in you. And every child of God has a gift. And you can use yours Today, as a matter of fact, I, um, uh, First Peter, I want to read it right quick to you. First Peter chapter two says this: "As free, not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as a bond, but as bond servants of God, honor all people, love the uh, brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. When you use your gift for God." You are to use it for others. You are, to, you are to love the brotherhood. You are to love your brothers and sisters in Christ by, you, by not uh, 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 shirking your responsibility, but by using your gift. So make no mistake about it. You have been set free to serve. And I hope and pray that this, this little series of messages that I'm putting together, uh, uh, that I'm calling Set Free to Serve, will help you understand that even you have a gift. And, and, and we're going to highlight some things in Scripture that show the necessity and the beauty of serving God through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit as He gifts you to use your gifts liberally. And He gives you the right and He gives you the okay to do it. Before we get into our discussion, before we get into our, 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 our message today, let me say this. The use of spiritual gifts and being set free is not for the glory of um, yourself. And it's not for the glory of the Holy Spirit alone. 
the, the use of your gifts by being set free to serve is for the glory of the Heavenly Father. Now, let me be, let me be careful about saying this. I know some of you have different backgrounds and, and things like this, but please understand, we spend far too much time worshiping and bringing praise to the Holy Spirit for the spiritual gifts that He gives to us. Far too much time. The Holy Spirit's whole purpose behind giving you gifts and imbuing you with the, 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 the spiritual gifts that you receive at, 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 uh, uh, at salvation, He gives you these gifts for God's glory, for the glory of the Father. And we need to understand that, and we need to uh, understand that we rob God of a blessing and we rob ourselves of a blessing when we fail to honor him by using our spiritual gifts Christ has set us free from sin to be saved and to serve and the Holy Spirit is the one that has given us these gifts stimulated us to, to, to use these gifts and to serve God in ways that we could have never imagined we could have never dreamed if we'd just be willing to use them I'm telling you, I'm sitting, standing here today watching uh, a, a number of people who are not using their gifts like they could be and would be absolutely amazed at what God would do through you if you would use your gifts. Let's read, if we could, starting at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren... I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, uh, but the same Spirit, these are different differences of there are differences of ministries but the same Lord and there are diversities of activities but it is the same God who works all in all but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit to another faith by the same Spirit to another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the workings of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Today, I want to focus on verses 7 through 11. In that passage that we just read, verses 7 through 11. The first thing I want you to see, write this down, is the definition, the definition of spiritual gifts. Look at the definition that Paul gives us of spiritual gifts. He gives that to us in verse 7 itself. Verse 7 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Paul explains that a spiritual gift is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God. That's what a, a spiritual gift is. It is a manifestation of the Spirit of God through you as you allow God to work and to use you. It's a manifestation of the Spirit. And so uh, please understand that when you allow your spiritual gifts to be utilized for God's purposes, you are manifesting the Spirit through you. That's what differentiates a, a, a talent or a skill, okay? Let me tell you about this. There are things called talents and there are things called skills and then there's something totally different called a gift. And what differentiates that is that the Holy Spirit will always use that gift. Now, He does allow your talents and your skills to be used as well for His purposes. And He does allow your talents and skills to enhance the gift that God has given you. There's no question about that. 
But there is something different about a spiritual gift and a talent and a skill. A talent and a skill you can, uh, you can achieve on your own. But a gift is something that is completely God-given. Now notice that Paul says that a manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. Do you see that in verse 7? It says that it is given to each one. So that means that each one of you, each one of you has at least one spiritual gift. Yeah, you may not know what it is, but I'm telling you, each one has. That doesn't mean you don't have one. Each one of you has at least one spiritual gift, and some have more than one. Some have more than one. And so I want you to understand, you have that gift. So say that with me. Say, I have a spiritual gift. Ready? I have a Good. You said that like Baptists. Now let's say it like the Pentecostals. I have a spiritual gift. Say it loud with me. I Ah, you're getting there. You do. You have a spiritual gift. And your gift, God wants to use. Your gift, God wants to use. And he will use it in ways that you never thought possible, that you never dreamed possible, if you'll allow him to do it. He tells us that every one of us has a gift. Everyone, if you're a child of God, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, he has given you a gift to each one and I think that's a blessing but then notice what else he says um, uh, he tells us the purpose of the spiritual gift look at verse 7 again but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all it's for the common good of everyone for the profit of all that means that your spiritual gift as you use it and as you let God uh, uh, work through you uh, in that spiritual gift it is not for your profit it is not for your good it is not for your benefit it is not for your glorification it is for the good of all it's for the good of others and that's why a lot of people don't use their spiritual gift because they are only focused on them they only want what's good for them they only want what benefits them that's why a lot of people don't use their spiritual gift because they're not looking to bring benefit to others did you hear me we are a very selfish people would you agree you don't even have to teach a child to be selfish they automatically know you sit two of the prettiest little babies that you have in that nursery right now. We can bring them up and set them right here in front of us and put one toy in between them. And not one time will that one baby say, here, you take it. I want you to have it. You set a piece of pie between me and Jamie Lane right now, and I'm here to tell you. <laughs> Amen? That's right. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it'll be a battle royale. I'm here to tell you because we are a selfish people and that's why many people don't use their spiritual gift the Bible says it's for the good of all it's for it's it, it, it's it's for the good of everyone it's for the good of others that we use that gift spiritual gifts are not given to glorify you or to make you feel important or to make you better than somebody else that is not why God gives spiritual gifts and by the way he will not give you a gift if he thinks you're going to use it improperly they are given for the benefit of others for the common good of the whole church is why they're given Charles Swindoll he defines spiritual gifts like this he calls it an ability or skill that enables the recipient to perform a function in the body of Christ with ease and effectiveness let me read it to you again he says in a, in a spiritual gift is an ability or skill that enables the recipient to perform a function in the body of Christ with ease and effectiveness so what that means is is there is not one Christian here today who can say I don't have a spiritual gift you do there's not one Christian here today that should feel cheated out of a spiritual gift because you've been given one every one of you have 
There's not one Christian here today who has not been supernaturally enabled by God to do something important and valuable for the cause of Christ to help this growing body of believers called First Free Will Baptist Church. There's not one of us. Let me, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let me give you a personal example. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I was at camp, church camp. And the Lord began to deal with me about preaching. Now, you need to understand that I was an incredibly shy child incredibly shy I know that's hard to believe today but I'm telling you there were people that I'd been to church with all my life that would, hadn't heard me speak five words up to that point I'm telling you and I just didn't you know I had my circle of friends that I would talk to but outside of it I was a, I could I could stand in a choir and sing because I would blend in with people and I wouldn't stand out I could even get on stage and act uh, um, uh, plays and, and things like that because I was acting I was, I was communicating someone else trying to be somebody else not trying to be myself and so I could do that but I could not be myself and just talk to people like, like uh, normal people do I just couldn't do it and at 16 the Lord started dealing with me about preaching and I, I, I remember that night as the preacher was preaching the message, I remember saying, God, you're not talking to me. You missed, you missed, you, you, you know, uh, you didn't hit the bullseye. You must be talking to one of these other guys sitting next to me or around me. You are not talking to me. You, do you understand? I cannot speak in front of people. I can't talk in front of people. And you're wanting me to preach? No, it's not me. And I rejected it. The Lord continued to deal with me and deal with me and deal with me. finally when I was 17 years old I remember the night on a Sunday night I was sitting on the second pew of our home church and man the Lord had been dealing with me hard about this thing for weeks and I was miserable I was miserable about it and I remember sitting on the second pew and I could not wait till the preacher got to the invitation I don't I couldn't tell you what he preached I had no idea what he was preaching that night all I could think about was what God was dealing with me about on that second pew and finally he said let's all stand and bow our heads and close our eyes and I didn't even wait for the song to start I got up from right there on that second pew and came and knelt right here beside the the, the pulpit right down here waiting on the pastor to come down and give me some words of wisdom. I remember Lonnie Skiles, he's gone on to be with the Lord now, but he came and he knelt down beside me and he said, uh, <clears throat> Derek, um, I haven't told you what to come for yet. <laughs> I said, I know, but God's already told me and I know exactly why I'm here. And he said, you want to tell me? I said, the Lord's called me to preach. And this is what he did, and I'll never forgive him. He prayed with me. He sat me right there on the front pew. He got up. He finished the invitation. All right? It took a lot for me to say in front of him, the Lord's called me to preach. I mean, I was crying like a baby, like a baby. He stood up and he finished the invitation and at the end of it he said, y'all be seated. He said, God has moved in a tremendous way tonight and he said, I just want to help him make it public. And so Derek, you come up here and you stand right here behind this pulpit and you tell him what you told me right down there. I looked at him. And I got up, and honestly, that was, you know, it was the long, it was the green mile, except it was red carpet, as most Free Will Baptist churches were. It was, it was the green mile walking just that little short distance up those steps and behind that pulpit. And I remember thinking, God, you're going to have to do it. I don't know what to say. You're going to have to do it. My knees were literally knocking together. 
And uh, I said, the Lord's called me to preach. And you know I hadn't shut my mouth since. <laughs> Amen, Missy? That's the truth. I have not shut my mouth since. Some of you have even come to me at the back door back here after a service. Some of you have come to me and said, Preacher, it sounded to me like you were talking directly to me. I mean, it felt as if today you were speaking directly to me. Well, you see, that's not me. That's me using my gift and the Holy Spirit working through me. I had a lady in Lewisburg. I stand at the back door of the church, and she come walking back there, and I could tell she was in a hug. You know, she come walking back there, and she said, you know exactly what I've done this week, and that is why you preach that message. And she wasn't kidding. She said, I cannot believe you would get up and share what you shared knowing what I've done. I said, Barbara, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, yes, you do. I'm liable to never come back to this church. I said, I honestly do not know what you're talking about. You see, the Holy Spirit will use that. He'll use you, and he'll use your gift if you'll just let him do it. He'll use your gift. I may, I may pray a prayer or something that, that you hear, and, and, and it sparks something. The Holy Spirit just moves. And I, I may say a word at the right time in the message that the Holy Spirit just moves. And it is not me. It has nothing to do. It is not me. It is the Holy Spirit that speaks to hearts. I cannot speak to your heart. I pray all week long, Lord, please use Use me, use me this week uh, when I preach. Use me to speak to somebody today. I always pray that, but it is not me. I'm not that good. I'm not a naturally gifted speaker. The Holy Spirit uses our gifts if we will allow Him to use them, and He will use yours. He will use yours. Look at number two. I want you to see the diversity of spiritual gifts. The diversity of spiritual gifts. Having just finished saying that to each one... Um, uh, there's manifested the, uh, a gift. Um, uh, the Spirit has manifested a gift for the common good of everybody, you know, uh, not for us. It's, it's for all people. Um, he, he then says, look, look at uh, verse 8. He says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another... Whoops, I lost my phone. Uh, to another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of, spir uh, of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. You see, he tells us that there is a diverse kind of, of, of gifts that he gives. He don't just give one gift. There is diversity in the gifts here. And, and so uh, we, we know that he doesn't try to list them all either. There are other gifts mentioned in Scripture like the gift of encouragement, the gift of leading, the gift of pastoring, the gift of evangelism, the gift of giving, the gift of showing mercy, the gift of teaching, the gift of serving. There are other gifts mentioned in Scripture. There are other places in Scripture that he mentions gifts. 1 Peter chapter 4 uh, is, is one place. Uh, um, uh, Romans chapter uh, 12 uh, is one place. Ephesians chapter 4 is another place, as well as here. And if you'll notice in all of those lists, uh, um, uh, there are different gifts that are mentioned within those lists. So the list that he gives us today is a sample list. It's a sample list of gifts. 
And so understand that just because you don't have a gift that you want or that you think you, d you deserve or that you think you would be good at, there are many other gifts. There are many other gifts. And some of you have some great gifts. You've got some great I'm going to pick on some of you today. Is that all right? I'm going to pick on you a little bit today. Jeff Atkins has a tremendous gift. His gift is, is uh, um, in welcoming people. His gift is in making people feel welcome. He stands out there and he shakes hands and he opens doors to vehicles and he hands out bulletins and he uh, speaks to everybody that walks through that door right there. He has a tremendous gift of hospitality. That's his gift. That's what he's using for God. Jamie Lane has a tremendous gift. His gift is playing the piano. He only took a couple of months of piano lessons and he plays it like he built it. I hate that. I want that gift so bad I can't stand it. I took a couple of months of piano. And you know what I got from it? I know where middle C is. That's all I know. I can't play chopsticks on this thing. I'd love to be able to play it. It looks so fun. It looks like he has such a good time. Middle C, it's all I got. That's it. I don't know anything else about a piano. I would love to play an instrument of some kind. I've tried. I mean, the harmonica, the spoons, the little ham bones, something. I just want to play something. I can't do any of it. You guys have gifts. Gifts of mercy. Gifts of giving. Gifts of hospitality. Gifts of teaching. Gifts of evangelism. You guys have gifts. And you're keeping them hid. You're not using them for God. How are we going to stand one day before God knowing the diversity of gifts that he gives us? How are we going to stand one day before God and tell him, sorry, <laughs> I just didn't have time to use your gift? How do we do that? There's a diversity of gifts, and, and please understand, it's not the gift that you want it's the gift that he gives you. And that brings us to our third point. And that's the distribution. The distribution of spiritual gifts. The distribution of spiritual gifts. Look at verse 11. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Keep that verse up there on the wall if you would. Distributing to each one individually as he wills. Paul makes clear that the Spirit of God determines who gets what. As much as I would love to be able to play the piano, that is not a gift that God has given me. I've tried. It just doesn't work. God knows exactly who needs what gift. And it is our job to say, Lord, whatever it is, whatever that gift is, please allow me to be open to it and willing to, your spirit, uh, uh, willing to, to follow your Spirit's lead in utilizing that gift for your glory. So you, if you're a Christian, you have a spiritual gift right now, right now. You have a spiritual gift, and it's a gift or, or maybe gifts that was given to you by the Spirit of God in His sovereignty, in uh, 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 an infinite wisdom. You have been chosen a certain gift or gifts just for you. Take it and accept it and use it. You may already know what your spiritual gift is. I don't know. 
You may already know what your spiritual gift is. But the truth of the matter is, you may not be using it. And you may not be using it as God would have you use it. Write this down at the bottom of your notes. You can learn a skill. You can develop a talent. But you're given a gift. You can learn a skill. You can develop a talent. But you can only be given a spiritual gift. You can only be given a spiritual gift. I am created to use my gifts. I'm created to use my gifts. You are created to use your set of gifts because God has a purpose and a plan. How do you find your gift if you don't know it? Number one, write this on the back of your notes. There's not any blanks there. I just want you to write this down. If, if um, uh, this is something that I thought about last night, I thought I better put this in here. If you're gonna if you're gonna use your spiritual gifts, you need to know what they are. And here's how to know. Number one, pray. Pray and ask God to reveal the gift that He has given you. Pray. Number two, trial and error. Trial and error. Sometimes you just gotta try things. Let me just say, a lot of people don't do things because they're afraid of failure. Can I just say this? I'm giving you the permission to fail. I'm giving you permission to fail. It is not a sin to fail. It is a sin to stop trying. Just trial and error. Try something out. If it doesn't work out, stop doing it and try something else. If that doesn't work out, stop doing it. Try something else. Trial and error. <laughs> when I was in uh, vacation Bible school, I was just a little kid. I was about seven years old. I told you I've always wanted to play the piano. I always thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I went to vacation Bible school at this church, and uh, sitting there, and, and, and the lady said, okay now, she said, uh, who, who here, is there anybody here that can play the piano? We're going to sing a little song. Anybody here can play the piano? I looked around. She said, can you play? Mm -hmm. See, I thought she was just going to make a point and go, that's great, man. What a, you're, that's awesome. How awesome is that? And then, then, then move on. She said, well, come on up here and play us a little song. Come on up and play a song. Well, all right. I got up there and she said, what do you know? I said, what do you want to sing? I was about seven years old. She said, do you know Jesus loves me? Yep. She said, all right then, let's, let's sing Jesus loves me class. We're going to sing Jesus loves me. You get us started and we'll start. I said, okay. You know, I'm doing all this, the stretches, you know. And I said, okay. And I start playing. And she starts going, Jesus, um, okay, all right, here we go. Jesus, no, okay, all right, here we go. We're going to get ready, class. Here we go, here we go, ready. Jesus, you know, and, and, and she said, hang on a minute. I don't think I know your version. She said, why don't you go sit back down and, and we'll, we'll sing the version I know. I said, okay. Went and sat back down. The fact of the matter is, guys, is <laughs> he distributes these gifts, and sometimes we need to try it through trial and error. Now, if you don't know how to play the piano, you don't know how to play the piano. Okay? That was not trial and error. That was stupidity of a seven-year-old kid. But the fact is, is 
Sometimes you just got to try it. So number one, pray about it. Number two, trial and error. Number three, write this down. Ask someone that you have confidence in. Ask a mature Christian. Go to them, sit with them, say, what do you think my spiritual gift is? What do you think my spiritual gift is? If they know you, if they've been around you, they may have seen something in you. And it may be something that you've not been willing to accept yet. And he says, and, and they tell you, here's what your spiritual gift is. Ask, ask. And then number four is through a, a gifts assessment. Uh, uh, they call it a spiritual gifts test or a gifts analysis. It's not a test because you can't fail it. It's, it's more of an analysis, okay? And if you want to take a spiritual gifts analysis, let me know. I've, I've got one on my computer. I'll print it off for you, give it to you, and uh, let you take that, okay? But we all need to use our gifts because we rob God of these golden opportunities to do something wonderful in, uh, uh, in your life and in the lives of others if you fail to use your gifts. So the question is, and I'm closing... The question is, are you willing? Are you willing to use your gift? Are you willing? Let's stand to our feet if we could.